Okay, so now we're going to continue with hypothesis testing and we're going to do an example, okay? And here are the 10 steps that we had gone over in the previous video. And yes, 10 seems like a lot, but as you'll see, these are going to go very quickly. So in this example, we have a population here, and what we're going to ask is, what is the mean age of this population? And one of the guys has an idea. He says, I think our mean age is 30. And you say, no, there's, I don't think so. I think you're wrong. I don't think there's any way that your mean age is 30. But I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say your mean age is 30. And then I'm going to try to prove you wrong. And by proving you wrong, I'm going to be proving myself correct. So you take a random sample from your population of 10 people. So we have a sample of 10. And from this sample, we're able to collect some data. Namely, we get the mean age of these people and the sample size. So that was our first step. Remember, it was to get data. So we have our data. We also have to make some assumptions about our population, uh, about the population distribution, actually. So here's our population distribution. And we have our population parameters, the mean, which is signified by mu, the standard deviation, sigma, and the population's sam uh, population size, which is n. So the first assumption we're going to make is that it follows a normal distribution. We can't always make that assumption, but this time we're going to make it. And the next assumption we're going to make is that the variance of this population is 20. Maybe we have this from some old data or something. You can't always make this assumption either, and we'll go through an example where you can't. But for this example, let's say you can. So you know if the variance is 20, that the standard deviation of this population, signified by sigma, is 20, the square root of 20. Now, step three is to, f to form our hypotheses. And we already talked about those. We're going to say our null hypothesis is that we agree with this guy who says that the mean age is 30, and our alternative hypothesis is that it is not 30, and we're going to try and prove that person wrong. Now, the next thing that we have to do is come up with the test statistic. And we can pick either Z or T, but since we've made the assumption that our population had a normal distribution, we can go with the Z statistic. And just so you remember the formula for this Z statistic, Z equals the mean of our sample minus our hypothesis, hypothesized mean over the standard error. And you'll remember that the standard error in this case equals the standard deviation of the population over the square root of the sample size. So if we make that substitution in here, this is the formula that we get. And because our distribution we said was normal, we can use the Z distribution, which has a mean at 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So now we have to come up with our decision rule. And our decision rule is really based on trying to minimize our type 1 error. If you'll remember, a type 1 error is falsely rejecting a true null hypothesis. So in this case, what that would mean is that we had rejected this guy's statement that I think the mean is 30, uh, but he was actually right. We don't want that to happen because when it comes back to us later, it'd be very embarrassing that we had that we were wrong and we had made a big mistake and so we want to minimize that possibility of falsely rejecting this null hypothesis and the value that we want is, is we have to set the alpha which is how sure do we want to be that uh, we're, that we won't make this type 1 error because we don't want to do that and but the, but the stricter we are the harder it will be to prove this guy wrong so let's just say that we are willing to accept uh, a 5% chance that this guy is actually right and we call him a liar. Uh, we don't want that to happen. We don't want that type 1 error. So we're going to set our alpha at 5%. So what does that really mean? Well, this distribution here is the distribution that we're going uh, of the null hypothesis. It is assuming that this guy is right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to show that the data that we collected would be so improbable if this guy was right that there's no way that this could be true. 
that if he was right, it would be very rare for us to have collected that data, so that means he must have been wrong. And so how, how improbable is it? Well, we said we said a value of 5%. That's the, that we're going to do. Now, it could be the, the actual mean um, age could be greater than 30, or it could be less than 30. So we have two ways that he could be wrong. So we're going to set two areas. If the value that we get is way far away from the mean, so even though this says 0, it also represents 30. But we know that when we took a z-score of, of that distribution of the population, that the mean actually turns to 0. So we know that the, the actual age could be so far below the mean that they had said uh, that it could be over here. But the other thing that could also just as easily be true is that uh, we, you know, we find that the actual age is way, way, way above it. So maybe it's like 38 or 39 or 50. So we know that that's another uh, way that, it, that that guy could be wrong. So ultimately, together, we only want him there to be a 5% chance that we would be in these two areas over here. So 5% here and, and here means 2.5% in each. So if the mean of our sample falls in one of these areas, then we call BS on that guy, and we say, guess what? You're wrong, and we're right. Of course, there's a 5% chance that we're actually wrong and he's right, but we're willing to take that small, small chance. So let's take a better look at this uh, distribution here. So these two areas over here we're going to call the rejection regions or the rejection areas. And then, of course, this portion in the middle is the area of non-rejection. And so this is worth 2.5% and this is worth 2.5%, which means this whole area is 95%. And you'll notice here, I didn't say area of acceptance. Just because we get a value that's in here, we're not willing to say that that guy's right. We're just not going to say that he's wrong. Because, you know what, he, we still could be right. We just can't prove that he is, uh, that we are right. We just say that, yeah, I can't say that you're wrong, but here we're going to say he's wrong. So what value is this area here, this number? Is this, how many standard deviations away from the mean is that? So we're going to have to refer again to our handy Z table. And you'll see here that the Z table uh, is a what's called a one-tailed Z table. It only gives us the probability of up to here. It doesn't exclude this area like we want to here. So we'll have to do that manually on our own, but that's okay. We just want to know what this cutoff point is. So what is the cutoff point that we're going to pick here? What is this cutoff point here? And that is we want to know at what point is there 2.5% on this side. So 2.5% on this side. So 2.5% on this side means that there's 97.5% on that side. So all I have to do is find 97.5% in this table. And so we just start looking. And let's just pick a place to start. Let's start here. Well that's 93.45%. We need to get more than that. There's 96%, 97.19 and 97.44. Ah, here it is, 97.5%. So 97.5%. And that corresponds to, first go over here, 1.9, and then we go up to here, 6. So it corresponds to a value, Z value, of 1.96. So now we can go back to our our distribution here and we know that right here that is 1.96 1.96 standard errors away from the mean similarly on the other side if that was positive then this must be negative 1.96 standard errors from the mean but on the other side so what that means is if we get when we do our sample if we get a Z value, our test statistic to fall between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96, then we fall in the area of non-rejection and we say, you know what, guy, I can't say that you are wrong. However, if we get uh, 
our test statistic to fall with, with something that is less than negative 1.96 or more than positive 1.96 that falls within our rejection regions and we tell that guy guess what you were wrong I was right ha 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 so coming up with this decision rule is probably the hardest part of this so now all we gotta do is do a couple other things so let's first calculate that test statistic and so let's move over here real quick for just a second so we can remember this is our formula for the test statistic and do we have these values sure we do x sub prime we knew that or, or x bar we knew that the mean of our sample was 27 do we have our hypotheses hypothesized mean yes we do it's 30 do we have our uh, sigma our standard deviation we sure do it's a square root of 20 and do we have the sample size n yes we do it's 10 so we have everything we need to calculate this so let's just plug in those numbers then okay so you remember that x sub bar was 27 minus the uh, hypothesized mean which was 30 over uh, what well, sigma and I believe that was the square root of 20 divided by the square root of the sample size which is 10 so we just got to calculate what that comes out to and if you use a calculator you're going to get negative 2.12 so now where does negative 2.12 fall on our curve well it falls right here and that's smack dab within the rejection region so we are going to reject that null hypothesis we're going to tell that guy you know what you're wrong uh, the mean is not 30 so our statistical decision is to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to re reject that mu equals 30. So now you could tell this guy who says, I think the mean is 30, say, no, 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 man, you are wrong. I can tell you that you are wrong. You know what? I can even tell you how sure I am that you are wrong. And so we got to go back to the Z table here and remember that our calculated test statistic was negative 2.12 so we can actually find that on the table we got 2.1 here and we got 0.02 there so we'll come down here down to here and so we got 98.30 and what that means is you'll remember that we said that this area here took 95 percent of the uh, area under this distribution but if we were to use negative 2.12 which is our statistical uh, test statistic and we draw that on both sides then the area here underneath all of this this area that I just made yellow is 98.3 percent and then this leftover area here on either side that accounts for the rest so 1.2 seven percent so that would be half of that over here and half of that over here so that's 0.85 over here and 0.85 of the distribution over here so what that really means is that uh, assuming that guy was right only 1.7 percent of the time would we have found the data that we had and we set a threshold of five percent so we were way less and so we can tell the guy I can tell you how wrong you are you would say that the only way that I would find that data is, if you were right is I only find that 1.7 percent of the time and that's pretty unlikely and so that's what a p-value is it, it kind of will say this particular data how, how likely would that have been if the null hypothesis were true pretty unlikely is the answer so the null hypothesis is probably not true so you say you know what you are wrong and I am 98.3% sure of that, the fact that you are wrong. So this was a long drawn out uh, explanation of hypothesis testing. We'll do a couple more so you can kind of get it. I'm not going to go through, I'm going to try to go through it a little bit more smoothly and a little bit more quickly, So, but with more examples we should be able to get it. So if you have any questions, please, please, please put it in the comments down below or let me know. Thanks a lot. Bye.